Hello, here's a video uh, covering the design of a steel beam supporting uh, a UDL and it's a laterally restrained steel beam. So um, this is one video of a few that um, are looking at steel design making use of the SCI's Blue Book which is a superb resource for steelwork designers. Uh, the plan is quite simple, we'll be running through an example beam uh, and then uh, producing a calculation that's going to look a little bit like this. So, so that's, that's the plan. We might as well um, jump straight into this and um, make a start. Right, so I've got a, a beam, it's 10 meters span, it's simply supported. Uh, if you want to know more about simple supports, then have a look at the introductory video. Uh, its top flange is laterally restrained, which is good if you're doing manual calcs. That would mean that you uh, don't have to worry about um, lateral torsional buckling, which makes things a lot simpler. It's also non-composite and it supports uh, these unfactored loads. Uh, it's got a dead load or a permanent action of 20 kilonewtons a metre. For simplicity, I've said that includes the beam self-weight. It's got a variable action or live load of 16 kilonewtons meter. These are things that I've worked out earlier. And then the beam supports plastered partition walls. And you might be wondering why on earth that's important, uh, but it is. <laughs> because what, what we're going to do is we're going to check the, uh, the design bending resistance moment of the beam, the design shear resistance of the beam and we're also going to check its deflection and uh, knowing that it support that the beam supports plastered partition walls uh, takes us quite usefully a little further along in our design so EC3 uh, makes the following comments about vertical deflections it says that they need to be specified for each project and agreed with the client well that is a very sensible um, recommendation however it doesn't tell us how to limit deflections uh, the UK National Annex, uh, this includes a little, little, little bit of information on vertical deflections and it says that thinking about the characteristic load due to variable loads, not including permanent loads, so this is just live load, unfactored, it says for beams carrying plaster, plaster or other brittle finish, limit the deflection to span over 360. That's really good because we can make use of a, a little shortcut formula to help us with this. Very good. Let's make a start. Uh, I've just, oops, I've drawn out here what we've got. It's a beam, 10 meter span, dead load and live load. And from that, we need to uh, complete our, our loading. Uh, these are unfactored or characteristic loads, so let's factor them up. The dead load gets a factor of 1.35, the live load gets a factor of 1.5, so we've got total factored ultimate limit state load of 51 kilonewtons per meter acting on the uh, beam. What I'd like to do now is, is actually just work out the bending moment so MED, the design moment, WL squared over 8. WL squared divided by 8, there it is. And there's our bending moment diagram. The shear force, the design shear, is WL over 2. So we've got WL divided by 2, and there's our design shear force. OK, so of the three things that we're checking with these counts, we've already got our design moment, design shear force. Pretty easy so far. Next, I want to consider the deflection. So the uh, National Annex says consider only unfactored live load. So that's what I'm doing. And I've worked out a bending moment due to that. So this is my bending moment. It's W L squared divided by 8, 200 kilonewton meters. And now I'll use my shortcut formula in order to work out what's the second moment of area that I need for my uh, beam. Well, I use this formula, I is ML over 56, and here it is in action. The uh, M is in kilonewton meters, the L is in millimeters, units are really important, and the I required is 35,714. Okay, 
but that gives me an answer in centimeters to the fourth which is useful because it relates directly to lots of design um, design guides that give information on um, on, on section properties so let's have a look let's summarize what we've got so far we've uh, calculated the uh, design bending moment, shear force, and we've got an I value that's required for uh, deflection. So we can now turn to the blue book and making use of these three uh, pages from the interactive blue book, uh, we can find the uh, the second moment of area the, of the uh, of a suitable section, and then check the design bending resistance and the shear force. Great. Well, here's the blue book on sale for uh, £80. And um, this is how I would normally find it. I would search for steel construction info uh, on Google. This would lead me to uh, the steelconstruction.info site. And within that site, I uh, can find the blue book in the key resources down the left hand side. When I open the blue book, I get to the home page uh, for the blue book, which has got a little video well worth watching, a, a link to download the PDF, and also a link to reach the interactive version of the book, which I would make use of, and I'll do that now. When I click through that link, I get to the blue book home page, which gives me a range of sections. Uh, I'm going to go straight to the universal beam uh, sections and I'll go straight to dimensions and properties because I want to initially size my beam on the basis of the I required because it's quite a long beam and I'm expecting deflection to govern. Here are the section properties and actually I've had a look at these before. I've gone straight to the sec second moment of area around the Y axis and I want to pick a second moment of area that's going to be greater than 35,714. Typically what I would do is I would look in each uh, serial size, so 610 by 178 includes these three fellows, 533 by 312 includes these four, and I would try and pick the lowest weight, because uh, often that's the most commonly available, most readily available section and it can also work out to be cheaper because the more you buy of something the cheaper it is. Uh, not always but that's that's the uh, the assumption I've made when I'm sizing this up. So for the 533312, well that's way more than I need. Uh, 533210 by 82, yeah okay that's more than I need but it's not looking bad. 533165, yeah that doesn't quite make it. So I'm going to have a look at the 533210 82. So I've got the I value uh, IYY or the second moment of area about the strong axis. So now I'm going to carry on checking the 533-210-82. I'll turn to the buckling resistance moment uh, with S355 and um, from this I'm going to find the um, design bending resistance moment. This, um, these pages of the interactive book are actually most useful for uh, design buckling resistance moments for lateral for beams without lateral uh, restraint to the top flanges but they also give this value here on the left hand side of the design buckling design bending resistance moment and so for 5332-1082 it's 731 you can see that it gives it for each beam 92 is 838 but for our one it's 731 okay so I'll make a note of that and I'll head off to check out the uh, shear. So I need to find the design shear resistance and I'm using the web bearing and buckling page to do that. Again S355 and here I am with the 533210s and I'll scroll down to the 82 weight and I've got a uh, column here that just simply gives me the design shear resistance and it's 1120. So I'll make a note of that and I'll uh, pick up my pencil and carry on with the rest of my calculations. Having uh, looked at the blue book, 
I'll summarise the design values that we've come up with and for a 533210 uh, 82k UB we can see that the uh, initially sizing the uh, second moment of area we knew that that was going to be safe uh, and it is safe and then we checked the bending moment uh, the bending resistance moment which is greater than the MED the applied uh, the design bending moment and then the uh, design shear resistance is significantly higher than the um, sorry the yeah, the design shear resistance is significantly higher than the design shear force. In fact, it's more than twice this value. Uh, the cutoff for high shear is a VED that is greater than 50% of VCRD, where in this case you can see that we're miles in. So we're completely safe there. If you want to, you could run a similar check for a different section. Here I've just just worked out uh, the the values required for it, the actual values of a, a UB457 so you can do this check yourself and that could equally be used uh, in place of the 533 section it's a little bit a um, little bit shorter just 50 mil in it and uh, so that might save a little bit of height if you're struggling with your floor depths now just for uh, people who are a little bit uh, skeptical the doubting Thomas is amongst you I'll <clears throat> I'll show that the live load deflection with the uh, I value that uh, yes with the um, second moment of area that we've chosen uh, does fall within the vertical deflection limits and this is the formula that I'm using it's 5 over 384 WL to the fourth over EI uh, that's a small W so it's in kilonewtons per meter just so happens that kilonewtons per meter and newtons per millimeter uh, run pretty well the same with W so there's no need to change this value when you're sorting all the units out. I sort all the units into newtons and millimeters uh, when I use this expression so for uh, uh, we know the E uh, Young's modulus of steel 210 uh, kilonewtons and millimeter squared uh, the I value we've got. So let's plug all this lot into the equation and see what we come out with. Well, we get a deflection of 21 mil. And our deflection limit, the vertical deflection limit, is span over 360. It's a 10 meter span, so we've got a deflection limit of 28. This tells us that we're okay. Uh, please be aware that this span over deflection limit of uh, this deflection limit of span over 360 really applies to beams within buildings supporting brittle finishes. There are lots of other beams, for instance, bridge beams, beams in um, uh, manufacturing shops, beams supporting um, steel cladding, which is fairly uh, resilient when it comes to deflections. Uh, you need to choose different deflection limits then. But for a lot of internal beams, this is a reasonable, reasonable one. All right, that brings calculations uh, close to an end. What I'll do now is I'll just show uh, the final calcs that uh, would be produced for something like this. Uh, here you can see that it's, it's split up into various sections. So the first section deals with the loading. So I've got the unfactored loads, I've factored the loads up and I've just drawn a little beam so I know it's nice and clear what's going on. Then I work out the bending moment, the shear force and the I required. Because this is a long span, I've decided to run with I first, but all I need to do now is turn to the blue book and find the moment and shear capacities and the I value provided by any particular section. So I'm going to trial this section. Second moment of area, OK. Bending moment, OK. Shear force, low shear, and it's OK. So I'll just summarise at the end what kind of beam I'm going to use. Right. I hope that uh, you found this, uh, that you could understand this video and that you found it interesting. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Cheerio.